Hello everybody and welcome back to episode 59 of Saving South End with me, Bell Nation. We played a lot of games since we last met. Today we take on second in the table, Ipswich, as we look to overtake them in the league if we can. One new face at the club, a couple of departures, there's a lot to get into. Roll that intro and let's get stuck into it. We played 14 games since we last met on Friday against Plymouth Argyle. We've got through a lot that's in all competitions as well. So let's start and have a look through at how we've got on. So following that Plymouth Argyle win, we lost 2-1 to Preston, a team that were lower than us at the time. Gordon scoring after we were 1-0 down, but really poor performance in a game where we were just outclassed by Preston. We jumped straight back to winning ways, however, with a 3-0 victory over Crewe with Gordon getting a hat-trick and Middleton getting one as well in front of the Roots Hall crowd. We then beat today's opponents Ipswich 2-1 in the FA Cup second round with a 94th minute penalty with Yestin Lewis also scoring to put us 1-0 up. Three minutes later, a penalty was scored by Ipswich, but I'm hoping that the boys will remember that and show that we can beat Ipswich when we play them in a minute. Then we hit a bit of a rough patch with five games without a win in all competitions. We started that run with a 2-1 loss to MK Dons where we were 1-0 up after five minutes. A disappointing collapse where we couldn't capitalise and get a second goal and put MK Dons to bed and they beat us comfortably 2-1. Similarly, we lost to Cardiff 2-1 as well in a game where we were 1-0 down after just nine minutes. But mm hand quickly got us back in it on the 13th minute. The second Cardiff goal was scored in the 39th minute in the second half we could not get back into it and lost 2-1 we got knocked out of the pizza trophy by losing 3-0 to Chelsea's under 23s in a game where we were really really poor and Chelsea's class showed through even those youngsters that they were playing back in the league we struggled against bottom of the table Stevenage in a game where we were 2-0 down but we fought back and drew 2 all yes in lose score in the 92nd minute to save us a point at the Lamex Stadium but a really really poor performance against a team where I would have expected us to win and then we were 1-0 down against Blackpool as well at Bloomfield Road. Glenn Middleton in the 88th minute though got us a goal back and we drew one all again in another game I would have expected us to win but another poor performance. But then we bounced back to winning ways with a 4-0 victory doing the double over Grimsby with Mansouray scoring, Gordon getting a brace and Bashir Humphreys rounding everything off at Roots Hall. Really strong performance and a really nice early little Christmas present for us. Then on Boxing Day, we had an absolute goal fest where we won 4-3 against Oxford with us being 1-0 up after Prince of Tim, then 1-0, then we were 2-1 up, then 3-1 up, then 4-1 up, and we almost blew it with Oxford scoring in the 72nd and 81st minute. We were very, very lucky that we didn't concede another goal, a game that we should have put to bed at 4-1. Mansory on the score sheet, along with Lundulu and an own goal. And then we rounded off the year with another goal fest, a 5-1 victory over Tranmere with Gordon getting a hat-trick, Middleton scoring, and Yestin Lewis getting another goal to his tally in a game where we were 4-1 up, and one five one, and then we started 2026 off pretty sluggishly with a 4-1 loss to Crystal Palace in a game where we played better than the scoreline suggests there but the difference in class between us and Palace really shone through and they comfortably saw their way through to the fifth round and then we lost to top of the table Rochdale again we were okay in the first half really really quiet in the second half didn't really do much in the second half and that came back to bite us and we lost 2-0. And finally, we drew 0-0 away from Huddersfield. A rare game where we haven't scored. The last time we did that in the league was back in October where we where we lost to AFC Wimbledon and Bristol City consecutively. So it's a while since we've not scored, but we were really, really poor there. Disappointing not to score as well. But a point nevertheless in the league is always valuable. And those results then see us sitting 5th in the table on 50 points, just 3 points behind today's opponents, Ipswich. And as I said, there's 3 points between us and AFC Wimbledon and 1 point between us and Cardiff. A couple of points between us and missing out on the playoffs entirely. And 10 points between us and top. So Rochdale are absolutely running away with the league. I was looking back, we lost 10 games when we went up as champions the season before last. We've currently lost 9. A little bit worrying that we have lost nearly as many as we did in that entire season with still 17 games to play. Luke Reeve, you're probably thinking, who's Luke Reeve and why am I showing you him? Someone in the comments asked if we could have a quick look at him. Luke Reeve, you're probably thinking, who's Luke Reeve and why are we looking at Luke Reeve? Someone in the comments did ask, where is he now and can we have a quick look at him? So here he is. He's still at the club, technically, but he is out on loan. £400 a week, his contract ends in the summer. 
22 years of age, looking at his stats, he's never going to make it for us. So to make sure he's never got in a contract again, set for a release. £400 a week saved just there. As I said, since we started here, he's never played higher than the seventh tier of English football in Vanarama North and South. Never really going to make the impact for us. So we'll save the money. We'll save the money and he can go out and find himself a new club. As I said in the intro, we've brought a face in and we've had a couple of outgoings. Let's go have a look at who we've signed. So just one man in the door so far, viewers, and this is Julio Cardoza, a man that we agreed to sign in the summer. An 18-year-old Uruguayan, three-star ability, potential three and a half, maybe even four and a half. He can play in that centre of midfield, but look at that first touch of 16, passing of 11, technique of 12. Good decision making as well, good teamwork. I think he could be a really, really strong player for us. Determination would like to see a little bit better for an 18 year old if he's going to live up to his potential up here. But he's come from defensive sporting where he played 26 games, scoring two goals and making four assists for them. I mean, this season alone, he's had a 7.20 for them. But if he can transfer that over to this South End team, he will have a really good impact here. Outgoing wise, we've had two departures. Nam plays Mendy played one game for us. He was on £2,700 a week. He w wasn't going to play anymore this season. So we've got £20,000 for him to go to Rotherham. And Miles Kenlock has left the club for £250,000 while going to divisional rivals at Bristol City. Hasn't played much this season due to playing three at the back. It was good to get his wages off the wage bill because he was on about £2,000 a week, £2,500 a week, which was a lot for a player not playing. There's still time in the window for business to be done. Will we do any? We'll have a look in tomorrow's episode. But without any further ado, let's get stuck into the Ipswich game. And here we are then. The starting eleven is Archie Mayer in goal, Bashir Humphreys, Bennett and Mitchell all at the back with Middleton on the left, Mansour and Tashaka in the middle. And on the right hand side, we do have Cardoza. Mhand is in behind Marquise Edwards, a man that we had to loan out in the summer because he didn't get a wet permit. We've reapplied twice for it. He got one, so we recalled him for his loan from the Bundesliga where he got six goals in 14 games. And Gordon is alongside him up top. You're thinking that Mhand has got a transfer. He's going to Toronto in the summer from Arsenal, so there's no chance of us getting him back next season. Slightly disappointed by that, I have to say. Ultimately today, we are looking for a victory against Ipswich Town. They've got Tony Mowbray in charge there. And if we can get one over on him, we could potentially overtake them in the table. The goal difference, because we scored so many goals, is working in our favour. And hopefully that will do it again today. We're going to pump the fist and tell the boys we can move into automatic promotion place. They know that. They're well aware that we can do that, especially when we are against a team that is occupying that last automatic promotion place. Kickoff is here then at Roots Hall. Can we pick up a much needed victory which will help us in our pursuit of automatic promotion? I really, really do not want the lottery of the playoffs. I've always said that the lottery of the playoffs is something I want to avoid purely because you can work so hard for a season and it can be undone with one moment of madness in the final minute of a game usually as well. As we have the early highlight here, but Ipswich should pick the ball up in their maroon share coming through on this right-hand side. Is it maroon or is it red? Looks more maroon. Good challenge by Middleton though. But Bennett picks it up. Humphreys launches it down the field. Edwards is in behind. Marquise Edwards. <sighs> he had plenty of chances in the last game and he could not find the back of the net. And he's done so once again, firing past the post. I'm unsure if he just is struggling a little bit with the league or getting on with the boys because, again, ultimately he's a new player here and he's not really met the boys because he pretty much went out straight on loan. I want him to be finding the net soon. Hopefully Jack Parkinson is not far away, his fellow countrymen, and they can form a formidable partnership. He's not a fellow countryman at all. Jack, Jack Parkinson plays for Gibraltar. A little bit different to America. Either way, I'm hoping they can form a partnership as well with Gordon. Oh, and Ipswich go 1-0 up. Agbajay, 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 Edwin, Agbajay, I think, you know the score, I don't know how to pronounce that name, with a lovely, lovely goal, Lowry finds the ball to McLaughlin on that left, right hand side, we've not dealt with it, and Agbajay is there in the middle, not really picked up by any of our defenders, which is really, really poor, and we're 1-0 down after 35 minutes here. We've only seen us have the one shot, which came to Edwards, and he scuffed it wide. We'll drop some encouragement, but as things stay the same, sorry, as things remain as they are, we stay in fifth in the table. We need to get these boys in and give them a bit of a kick. We've had five shots, one on target, and Ipswich had four, one on target. Plenty of food for thought in this 15-minute break. 
We'll tell we'll get we'll get the fingers pointing. Tell the boys we we are disappointed with that performance out there because they've not played to their potential at all, and it is disappointing to see them doing that in such a game of big magnitude. And we are back here for half time after half time. No highlight to know at the moment. We we might have to make a couple of changes. I'm wondering, do we mix it up tactically as well? Try and nullify it, switch, just see if we can maybe out attack them. Although they've not really been attacking, so they've only had one shot on target as well. Maybe have to have a look. As we go down this left-hand side, Middleton with a long ball through to Gordon. Can he score? Gordon, he's blasted over the bar. He thought he was on a rugby pitch, and it's gone straight over the stand, straight over the goal into the stand. The hour mark coming up. Percival with the throw in for Ipswich. Lowry now at the edge of the area. What can we do? Gibbs picks it up for Ipswich, but Mahan wins it back. Feeds through Gordon, who's coming forward on this right-hand side. Can he get the ball in? What will we do? Gordon, he's gone all the way to the byline. Finds Cardozo, and Cardozo with his first goal of the season. His first goal in South End Colours, just on the stroke of the hour mark. Lovely, lovely pullback from Gordon. What a run as well for him to go all the way from hour half. To the byline there, turn and spin, finds Cardozo, first time shot, and Hawley has dropped an absolute clanger there in the Ipswich net, palms it in, and Cardozo is saying thank you very much, and we are too for that gift to let us back into this game. McLaughlin, surely we can't concede straight away. Oh, Leary, it's tipped over the bar. Oh, it's gone up for a goal kick, I thought. Archie Mayer just tipped it over the bar very, very neatly there, but he hasn't. It had gone over. Ipswich again come forward, but we win the ball back. Marquise Edwards now on this left-hand side. What will he do? Will he square or will he go alone? He's gone alone, and that's his first goal for South End too. Get in. Three minutes later, we have turned the game on its head, and we are 2-1 up now. It's come from a deep kick from the defender and Marquis Edwards picks up deep inside the Ipswich half runs gets past his fullback sees the goal and shot slots it neatly past Hawley in the net I thought he was going to square it to Gordon he didn't he went alone and that was the correct decision and we go up to third at the moment one point behind Wimbledon headed away Mahand is here again breaking for we look so dangerous on the counter Gordon acres of space Gordon it's straight at Hawley I thought he was going to put it into the back of the net but not to be Corner of Middleton, deep Edwards, and it's straight at the goalkeeper this time. Oh, I thought that was going to go back in. We'll make a change now, actually, and see what happens. Two, one up. Where do we where do we try and influence this game? Middleton is looking tired. We've not really got anyone to bring on though, unfortunately. What we'll do is we'll bring we'll swap Cardozo into the middle and we'll bring Casey Palmer on that right hand side. I think we'll play Lundulu instead of of Gordon as well make a double switch with 20 minutes just short 20 minutes to go as Ipswich are in Ag Agdebe struggling every time Percival finds Lowry can we win this ball back to Shakra has picked up a bookie he doesn't need to do anything silly there the ball's been played around him though a little bit too easily on the left he's, he's intercepted but gives it straight back and McLaughlin with a deep header oh it's too old Steve McLaughlin with a short with a deep header rather Seven minutes after scoring, we are back on level terms here at Roots Hall to Shaka there. He's unlucky to give the ball straight to Percival. He's put his foot in. He's very well aware that he has picked up a book in there. And that is very, very disappointing that we've given the ball away. A little bit cheaper there. Very tired legs in the middle. So we will address that as well. We'll bring to Shaka off this time. And I think we'll bring Ian Jones on into the middle. Just to try and freshen things up a little bit. Middleton is looking tired along with Mitchell and Cardozo. But... We've we've made all the changes we can. We need to try and find a goal back into this again. We'll drop some encouragement on the boys and see what we can do here. Five minutes of injury time. Can we find a winner? Late highlight that is an Ipswich throwing. How are we going to concede or will we defend this ball? It's gone over everyone and McLaughlin's in. 3-2 to Ipswich in the dying minutes of the game. Steve McLaughlin, the 17th of the season. The long ball from Gibbs goes over everybody. And Bennett in the centre has missed the header. Ipswich go in behind at the far post and score in the dying, dying minutes of the game, the 93rd minute. And we lose 3 2. The XG for us as well is 1.42 to Ipswich is 0 0.89. They've had four shots on target and three have gone in. Oh, that is such a disappointing way to lose a game. We're going to thrash the arms about and tell the boys that that performance was not good enough. They seem motivated by that. 
how on earth have we lost that game? So from going looking pretty comfortable and being potentially up in second up there behind Wimbledon, depending on their result, which they have drawn to all, we could have gone third then. But Ipswich are now six points clear of us and Rochdale are 11 points clear. Are our promotion hurts slipping out of our fingers? Have we just lost our grip on the promotion race? What we're going to do is then, viewers, we're going to leave it there for today. We'll come back for the Rotherham game. They're currently five points behind us, so very much breathing down our necks. Hopefully, when we come back, we'll be in a better position than what we are. But when we look at the teams we've got to play, they are mostly teams lower than us. And I think this Rotherham one could be potentially a crucial one if, if the way we're playing at the moment continues. As I say, they are just five points behind us. And if you have enjoyed that video, viewers, please don't forget to smash that like button for me, share this video around and subscribe to the channel for more content. Thank you very, very much for watching and I'll see you again for more next time.